الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد respected brothers and elders assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so imam sahib mentioned on two occasions words of praise regarding you he said highly recommended by sheikh ahmad ali only those souls are worthy of being revered who are highly recommended by Allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and nobody else secondly i will praise your imam sahib and this is not an excellence on his part it is solely a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i will say that in many years i have not read a tarawi like today and i mention again that it is not from imam sahib this is a gift and a mu'jiza of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the holy quran rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has called a'zamu ni'am one hadith recorded by sayyid alawi rahmatullahi alayhi in his book khasa'is al-umma al-muhammadiyya sallallahu alayhi wasallam this hadith in which rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam had been reported to have said that man a'tahu allah hifz kitabihi whosoever allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants the hifz the memorization of his book meaning he makes him a hafiz from this we learn that a person does not become a hafiz from his own efforts and from his endeavors and struggles a person who is a hafiz is only a hafiz through the grace of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fawanna anna ahadan u'tiya afdala mimma u'tiya that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted him quran and he reveres and looks up to somebody else he holds somebody else who is not a hafiz who has some worldly career he holds him in high esteem and thinks i wish i was like this person then rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam goes on to say faqad saghara a'zam al-ni'am subhanallah he has this day and he has looked down on the greatest bounty a man can ever be gain from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the a'zam al-ni'am the holy quran may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to fulfill the rights of the holy quran May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to fulfill the rights of this holy month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to fulfill the rights of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. There are two factors which contribute to a day being very special. One factor is virtues mentioned by Allah and his rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding certain dates in the islamic calendar for example the period of hajj is very very virtuous because Allah has mentioned the virtues in the holy quran and another factor which contributes to a day being special is history when a date when a week when a month 
or when a year is a historical day, week, month, or year, then that becomes special. We find both of these factors in Ramadan. And we find that speakers usually speak regarding the virtues of the month of Ramadan. But Ramadan also has a great history to it, which also adds to its virtue. If we look in the seerah of Rasulullah we find many great incidents and events which took place in the month of Ramadan. We find that the first encounter of Rasulullah in the cave of Hira. After all, the month of Ramadan is the month of the Holy Quran. Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fi al Quran. The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. It has a very strong and a close link to the Holy Quran. So the first wahi and revelation which was revealed upon Rasulullah in the cave of Hira. When he was 40 years of age, the ulama of Sira, they write, that the age of 40 is an age where man reaches his physical and spiritual peak. It is an apex of man's physical and spiritual maturity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would grant his chosen souls, the Anbiya alayhi wa salatu wa taslim, he would grant them with nubuwa, bestow them with nubuwa at the age of 40. And the first encounter in the cave of Hira between Rasulullah and the most virtuous of the angels, Jibreel was an amazing encounter. And this took place in the month of Ramadan. Hafid ibn al-Hajar al-Asqalani he says that the most authentic view is and this has been attested and confirmed by Hazrat Mawlana Idris Khandendi Rahmatullahi in Siratul Mustafa. The most authentic view is that this first encounter with Jibreel alayhi salam was on the 17th of Ramadan. Now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would observe i'tikaf before receiving Prophet Muhammad. And narrations mentioned that his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, <laughs> He would also observe solitude and seclusion in the cave. Rasulullah in search for the ultimate creator would observe Atikaf every year in the month of Ramadan. And this particular year, on the 17th of Ramadan, Rasulullah he met the angel Jibreel salam. Jibreel entered and offered salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now remember, this salam was prior to the verses of the Holy Quran which talk about salam. So he is practically demonstrating the verses of the Holy Quran which were to be revealed. And salam is the identity of a believer. A beautiful hadith that I came across in which Sayyida Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha relates to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ma hasadatkum al-yahud ala shay'in ma hasadatkum ala salami wa ta'meen aw kama qala alayhi wa salatu wa salam subhanallah the Jews are not jealous of you on anything as they are jealous of you of, of salam and ameen these are two great gifts of this ummah this Ameen we have after Walad Zalim. Many of us thinking we are Hanafi. And we say Ameen silently. And then it goes so silent that it stops. There is no more Ameen. So Ameen is a great gift of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It means Allah must ajib. Ameen itself is a dua. It means, O oh Allah, accept. 
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam replied to this salam, wa alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now you could imagine the divine illumination, you could imagine the divine radiances, you could imagine the divine blessings from the cave of Hira at the time. Then Jibreel alayhi salam, he commands Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, iqra, read. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam immediately replied, ma ana I cannot, I am not able to read. Now what does this mean? <coughs> Two main meanings why the Prophet was unable to read. First and foremost, the Prophet as we know was unschooled and unlettered. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to challenge the world kept the Prophet away from reading and writing. Many people translate only as illiterate. This translation is wrong. The Prophet was not illiterate. He was the man who possessed knowledge of the former and the latter. The Prophet knowledge surpasses the knowledge of the entirety of humanity. If you place the knowledge of the Anbiya beside Rasulullah on one part of the scale and the knowledge of Rasulullah on the other part, the Prophet knowledge would outweigh the other knowledge of the Dawlam. So the Prophet ﷺ was not illiterate. He was unschooled and unlettered. He received no form of schooling on the face of this earth. So he's saying, Ma ala biqari, I am unable to read, was due to this. And ulama have mentioned another point that the Prophet ﷺ's blessed and pure heart which was cleansed on many occasions. The ulama have mentioned that the Prophet wasallam's blessed heart, his blessed chest was split on four occasions. And his blessed heart was extracted and cleansed. One, while he was in the care of Halima Sa'diya radiallahu anha, at the age of four. The second occasion, at the age of approximately 10. The third, on this instance, when gaining prophethood, and the fourth on the night of Mi'raj. In the night of Mi'raj, the heart of the Prophet ﷺ was cleansed using the water of Zamzam. SubhanAllah. The utensils and the tray was brought from Jannah, but water was not brought from Jannah. It was Zamzam. What does that go to show? That the Zamzam water is more virtuous than the water of Jannah. So the Prophet sallallahu replied, Ma ana I am unable to read. The second reason why he was ulama, that ulama mentioned why he was unable to read is because his blessed heart was left so awe-stricken and taken aback at the nur of the divine illumination that Jibreel alayhi salam brought with him that he could not read in the presence of Jibreel alayhi salam. Because this was the first encounter, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was awe stricken. He was struck by awe. So he could not read. Then he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that Jibreel alayhi salam embraced me so forcefully, so forcefully, <coughs> that there was no extremity to my suffering until I could not bear it anymore. And then he let go. And then once again he said, Iqara. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Ma ana biqari. I cannot read. And the same thing happened again, another embracing. And on the third occasion, Jibreel alayhi salam, Iqara bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al insana min alaq. اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم. These five verses were revealed. <coughs> Subhanallah. This is the first point of the history of Ramadan. The ulama they have mentioned that the books prior to the Holy Quran. The Torah, the Zabur, and the Injil, and the Sahaib, and the books revealed upon Sayyidina Ibrahim ala nabiyyina wa alayhi salatu wassalam 
these were also revealed in Ramadan. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he received books from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the first of Ramadan. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he, re he received the Torah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the sixth of Ramadan. On the twelfth of Ramadan, Sayyidina Dawood alayhi salam, he received the Zabur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on the eighteenth, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, he received the Injil. This is the history of Ramadan and this adds to the virtue of Ramadan. And we find that the equivalent of the experiences of the previous prophets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me explain. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he was invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Mantur. An appointment was made. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَعَدْنَا مُوسَى فَلَاتِينَ لَيْلَى we made an appointment with Musa for 30 nights. And then we completed and we added to this 30, 10 more nights. And he completed 40 nights. He will observe fast in the day. And this whole period of 40 days, he observed an i'tikaf. And then, he left behind Sayyiduna Harun alayhi salam to guide his people. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on to say, وَكَلَّمَهُ رَبُّهُ His Lord spoke to him. So he had this sharaf and this honor and this privilege of speaking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam he built a desire to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says Rabbi arini anzur ilayk Oh my Lord, show me yourself I want to see you not knowing that these physical senses in this worldly life do not have the capacity to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied Lam tarani you will never see me. It is impossible in this worldly life to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكِنِ انظُرْ إِلَى الْجَبَرِ Look towards the mountain. فَإِنِ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي If it stays firm and stable in its place, then you will surely see me. فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَرِ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made an appearance on this mountain. Ja'ala mudakkan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this mountain sm smash. He smashed this mountain to slivereens. Wa kharra Musa sa'iqa and Musa alayhi salam fell down unconscious. Falamma afaqa qala subhanak. When he regained this consciousness, he said, Allah subhanahu wa glory be to you Allah. Inni tuktu ilayka wa ana awwal al-mu'mini. I turn toward you and with tawbah, I repent. Now the ulama have mentioned, Khalid Mawlana Idris Khandel, in Ma'arif al-Qur'an, he mentions a beautiful point. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the equivalent of the entire experience of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. The 30 days, the equivalent of his 30 days are the 30 days of Ramadan. The equivalent of the 10 days which were added to the 30 are the 10 days of I'tikaf. The equivalent of speaking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the recitation of the Holy Quran. And the equivalent of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well and he was seen spiritually by the highest saints of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also the recitation of the Holy Quran. One who recites the Holy Quran with sincerity and ikhlas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant him ladat and will grant him such pleasure which is found in seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this whole experience is also given to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is nothing but the blessing and barakah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the same way, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, 
He also observed Iqtikaf and he fasted for 40 days in the wilderness. And thereafter Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Ramadan granted him the Injil. So Ramadan has a beautiful history to it. <coughs> Another beautiful and amazing event which took place in Ramadan is the Battle of Badr. The Battle of Badr, as referred to by the Holy Quran, is Al Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the Battle of Badr using the same word that he refers to the Holy Quran with Al Furqan, the differentiating factor between truth and falsehood, the battle which drew the line between Haq and Bati. Similarly, the Holy Quran is a kitab, is the kalam of Allah which draws the line and exposes Bati. And it draws the line between truth and falsehood, between haq and batil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed batil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he annihilated batil, he annihilated falsehood through the battle of Badr. Subhanallah, the battle of Badr was a stepping stone to the honor and the splendor of Islam. And it also marked the beginning of the end of kufr and shirk. <laughs> the battle of Badr was an amazing battle. The background of the battle of Badr is that in the early stages and the early days of Ramadan, in the second year after Hijrah, Rasulullah he learned of the trade caravan of Abu Sufyan returning from Syria. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he addressed the Sahaba al-Kiram, saying that this is a perfect opportunity for you people to demand your assets that were seized unlawfully in Makkah Mukarrama and to regain some of those assets. Because this trade caravan of Abu Sufyan, the wealth injected into this trade caravan, was not only the wealth of one or two merchants. They say that every child, every woman, every elder and every youth in Makkah Mukarramah injected wealth and capital into this trade caravan. And this same trade caravan was returning from Syria. So Rasulullah wasallam, he told the Sahaba Ikram that this is a perfect opportunity. Let's go and regain some of the assets of ours which were seized by these qualities in Makkah Mukarram. We were compelled to leave, let's regain some of it. The Prophet وسلم, was addressing the Sahaba here in Makkah Mukarram, and here at the trade caravan, Abu Sufyan, he apprehended that the Prophet وسلم, was going to intercept his caravan. He was anxious, he was concerned that this may happen. So every traveler Abu Sufyan was meeting, he was asking regarding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Have you seen Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Now one particular traveler, he told him that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was consulting his Sahaba regarding intercepting your trade caravan. So you should make some moves. You should change your route or send a message back to Makkah Mukarramah. So Abu Sufyan, what he did was, he paid a man called Dandam al Ghifari. He paid him a sum of money to go back to Makkah Mukarramah and to inform the people of Makkah Mukarramah that come, come very quick, rush, because your capital is at risk, is in imminent threat of attack. Now, Dandam al Ghifari, he went to Makkah Mukarramah and he passed this message on. Here in Madinah Munawwara, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had set off. One mile out of Madinah Munawwara, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he stopped for a visual inspection of this army. Now, this army of people, they were unarmed. Subhanallah, Allah Iqbal. He mentions and he depicts this whole scene 
in Urdu in a beautiful manner and he says Thejin ke paas do gore, chhe zhele aur aad shamshire Badalne ko aaye the dunia bar ki takhleer Subhanallah Those who only possess two horses, six armors and eight swords they aim to change and transform the destiny of the entirety of mankind. That is all the Sahaba Ikram had. Barefooted, that is why the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the plane of Badr was Allahumma inna hum khufatan fahmilhum. O Allah, they are barefooted, carry them. Wajiyahun fa'ashbi'hum. They are hungry, they are poor. O Allah, fill their stomachs. So these Sahaba that were in the battle of Badr, they had not intended to fight. They only intended to intercept the trade caravan of Abu Sufyan. So upon this visual inspection, the Prophet sent back some of the younger Sahaba who were incapable of traveling and fighting if need be. And then they continued. <laughs> Here, Abu Sufyan, he changed his route. He changed his route and he took the coastal route. And he reached Makkah Mukarramah. Once he reached Makkah Mukarramah, the people of Makkah had already set out. Yeah. Upon the call of Abu Sufyan, they had set out with an army of 1,000 fully equipped men. Their commander was Abu Jahl. When Abu Sufyan reached Makkah Mukarramah, he sent a message to Abu Jahl saying you may return now because the purpose of your leaving was to save your trade caravan. And you have reached back safe and sound, you do not need to go now. Abu Jahl was adamant. He said that we have set out, we need to reach Badr. And we will go to Badr and we will stay there for three days. We will enjoy ourselves, we will drink, we will eat and we will listen to music. We will have a little festival then, come back. Now Rasulullah wasallam, one or two days into the journey, the Prophet wasallam, he consulted the Sahaba Ikram. He made a mashwara regarding what to do. News of Abu Sufyan, news of Abu Jahl, coming with an army of 1,000 fully equipped men, reached Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he consulted the Sahaba Ikram. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran instructs him to do so. How virtuous for the Sahaba Ikram that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to consult them. وَشَعْوِرُهُ فِي الْأَمْرِ Make mashwara with them. Upon asking the Sahaba Ikram, as usual, the first person to show his enthusiasm, to express his allegiance to the Prophet sallallahu was none other than As-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Abu Bakr As-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he expressed his allegiance to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Thereafter, the second person was none other than Sayyidina Umar al-Fattab radiallahu anhu. And this is the order. We find a hadith in Mishkat al Basabi in which Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu he says that the order of the ranks of the Sahaba Ikram during the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says Kunna nakulu wa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Hayyun Abu Bakrin wa Umaru wa Uthman That while Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was alive we would maintain the same order of Fadilat and Virtue Abu Bakr, then Umar, then Uthman radiallahu anhu subhanallah so then Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he expressed his enthusiasm to be sacrificed in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thereafter, Sayyidina Miqdad radiallahu anhu, he addressed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in such beautiful words. He said, In bidima amarat Allah, go ahead with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you to do. Fawallahu, la nakulu kama qalat banu Israel ali Musa. By Allah, we will not say to you, we will not say, as the Banu Israel, the children of Israel, the Israelites said to Sayyidina Musa a.s. And what did they say? إِذْ هَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ قَمَاتِلَا إِنَّا هَبْنَا قَعِدُونَ You go 
I, your Lord, those of you engage with the enemy and fight, we are here, right here, sitting. We are not moving. He said, we are not going to say this. What did he say? وَلَكِنِ اِبْنَبْ أَنْتَ وَرَبُّكَ فَقَاتِلَا إِنَّا مَعَكُمَا مُقَاتِلُونَ Go with your Lord and engage with the enemy. We are with you fighting. نَحْنُ نُقَاتِلُ عَنْ يَمِينِكَ وَعَنْ يَسَارِكَ وَبَيْنَ يَدَيْكَ وَقَلْفَكَ We are going to fight on your right and your left, in front of you and behind you. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Mithdad رضي الله عنه so upon hearing these mashwara and these views and these opinions, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam decided to proceed, to continue. Now, the Uffah, they, they had reached Badr before the Muslims and they had seized the best areas, the areas with water. The Muslims, they reached Badr and the land on the side of the Muslims was squashy land. It was land in which their feet would sink. It was sand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Muslims of his favor. وَيُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا أَنْ لِيُطَبِّرَكُمْ بِهِ Subhanallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I, I send down to you rain. I send down on you rain. Why? So that this rain may purify you. It is said that the Sahaba Ikram, they do ponds so that they can save this water. And from this, these ponds, they were able to perform ghusl and wudu. And the same sand, which was squashy, which would make their feet sink, this same sand became hard ground. They reached brother on a little hill. A foot was erected for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a small foot. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he stated in one narration, Sayyiduna Anas, Anas radiallahu an, he reports from Sayyiduna Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu an, that on the eve of the battle of Badr, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took us out from the plain of Badr. And he was pointing at the locations, exact locations, <laughs> of where each chieftain and each man of the Quraysh was going to fall. هذا مصرع فلان هذا مصرع فلان هذا مصرع فلان This is the place where so and so is going to fall. Abu Jahl will fall here. Umayya will fall here. So and so will fall here. Anas radiyallahu an after the war he says وَالَّذِي بَعَثَ مُحَمَّدًا بِالْحَقِّ I swear by the Lord who sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the truth no chieftain of Quraysh he, none of them fell beyond the location that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed up the night before. Sayyidina Ali sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he that at the night of the battle of Badr, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the rest of us fell asleep. The only person who was awake was the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Such was the shafat and the affection of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew that if this small group of believers is annihilated today, who would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Who would be left from the Ummah? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made this awake the whole night. Engaged in dua and salah. In the morning, the time of Fajr, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam announced. He made an announcement that it is time for salah. He gathered all the Sahaba Ikram and he led them in prayer. After <coughs> Salat al Fajr, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he spurred the Sahaba Ikram to engage with the enemy, to fight the enemy with daring zeal. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he formed the lines of the Sahaba Ikram and he went back into the book. Now was the time for the Mubaraza. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he saw the Quraysh advancing. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at this point also made dua. The Allah, this is Quraysh. They have come and they are advancing to challenge you and falsify your Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, grant me the help that you have promised. O oh Allah, annihilate this group of people. The Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
going back into the world, it was time for the Mubaraza. Mubaraza means when from one side a few men or one man emerges and says, Hal me Mubaris. Is, is there any combatant who can come and fight me? Three Mubaris came out from the side of the Kuffar, Utba, Shaiba, and Walid. And from the side of the Muslims, Awf ibn Harith, Mu'awid ibn Harith, and Abdullah bin Rawaka, radiyallahu anhu. Three Ansari Sahaba. As they came up to this Kuffar, the Kuffar said, no, no, we do not want you. We want our own people, the Muhajireen, those who fled from Makkah. Those who were with us in Makkah, we want them. We want our people from our own tribe. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they addressed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Muhammad, akhrid ilayna akfa'ana min qawmina. That we want even the much contenders. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, send out your best men. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ordered. O Ali, stand up. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Hamza, stand up. And Ubaidah ibn Harith radiallahu anhu. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu was barely in his early 20s. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The son-in-law of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is asking him to stand up. Now the Mubaratah begins. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. He is combating and he is contending with Utba, with Ibarid. Ubaidah ibn Harith radiallahu anhu, he is contending with Utba. And Sayyidina Hamza radiallahu anhu, he is contending with Shayba. Ali and Hamza radiallahu anhu, with a single strike, they finish off the enemies. But Ubaidah radiallahu anhu, he had side problems. From both sides, they suffered injuries. But then during this period, Sayyidina Ubaidah radiallahu anhu, he was struck on his shin so badly that blood began pouring profusely. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu and Hamza radiallahu anhu, they came to his rescue and finished off Utba. And then they took Ubaidah back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is bleeding profusely. He is a excruciating pain. But still he turns to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was only one man on the minds of the Sahaba Ikram during their times of happiness and during their times of grief, during their times of comfort and during their times of pain. And that was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and nobody else. Not their mothers, not their fathers, not their sons and not their daughters, not their brothers and not their sisters. Nobody but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He turns to the Messenger of Allah and says, Ya Rasulullah, am I a martyr? The Prophet says, Yes, you are a martyr. Then he turns and then he says, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had your uncle Abu Talib been alive, this point that he recited for you, he would even confirm that this is more applicable to me than him. And the point is, wa nuslim hatta nusabra hawlahu. Subhanallah. That we will only surrender Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once we fall dead around him after trying to protect him. And once we become completely unaware and oblivious of our own children and our wives. That is the only time where we can surrender Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when we no longer are living. Until that time we cannot surrender this man. Abu Talib who died as a non-Muslim, he recited this couplet in praise of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now Sayyidina Ubaid ibn Harith radiallahu anhu, he is saying to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had your uncle been alive, even he would confirm that these words are more applicable and I am the more deserving and worthy of these words than him. Subhanallah. And then the battle began in full force. Subhanallah, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, he says that when I got some time during the course of the battle, the battle was in full heat, I got some time 
and I went to the book of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As the door was Sayyiduna Sa'd ibn Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. And inside the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in Sadda. And he was reciting, Ya Ayyu Ya Qayyum, Ya Ayyu Ya Qayyum, Ya Ayyu Ya Qayyum. He was imploring his Lord. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he says that during the call of the battle, I got some time and I went to the book. And I found that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had his hands raised. And he was begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma anjiz li ma wa'attani, O oh Allah, fulfill the promise you made to me. Allahumma in tuhzat haad bil isara min ahli islam, la tu'bat bil abu. O oh Allah, if this small group of Muslims is annihilated today, you will not be worshipped on the face of this earth. O oh Allah, fulfill your promise. Continually, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua. Till his blessed sheep fell off his blessed shoulders. And then Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he placed the sheep on the shoulders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he held the hand of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saying, Hasbuk faqad alhaqta ala rabbik. And this is the note for Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You have begged your Lord enough. This was the shafaqa and the look of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for this ummah. This was the battle of Badr. The kuffar were annihilated. Seventy chieftains of the kuffar were killed. And seventy of the Quraysh were taken captive. So this was the battle of Badr, an event which took place in Ramadan. And this battle and this event also adds to the virtue of Ramadan. How? Because the battle of Badr resulted in many verses of the Holy Quran being revealed. And Ramadan is the moon of the Quran. So through the battle of Badr, through the blessings of the battle of Badr, and through the blessings of the Badrini, the Sahaba who participated in the battle of Badr, we received many verses. Another great incident, more of a loss to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa which took place in Ramadan, was the martyrdom of Sayyiduna Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhu in the year 40 Hijri, in the month of Ramadan. On the 17th of Ramadan, Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu was martyred. After Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anhu, had dealt with the Khawarij, a very, very staunch group who had stood up against him, who would actually label him as a Kafir, Na'udhu Billah. He had dealt with them and they had all dispersed. Three of their leaders, they gathered in Makkah Mukarrama. Abdul Rahman ibn Murjim, Barak ibn Abdullah, and Umar ibn <laughs> and they gathered in Makkah Mutarama to make a mutra as to what we should do against these three men. According to them, these three men were the most corrupt men on the face of this earth. SubhanAllah. And these men were all companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anh, and Sayyidina Amr ibn Aas radiallahu anh. And according to them, these were the ones who were causing the most corruption in the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they got and they said, let's get rid of them. How do we do so? Let's fix a date. The date is going to be the 17th of Ramadan. Abdul Rahman ibn Murjim said, I will take care of Ali radiallahu anh. Barak ibn Abdullah, he said, I will take care of Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anh, in the mission. And the last one, he said, I will take care of Amr ibn Aas radiallahu anh, in this in Egypt. They all went their way and they had the day planned. It should be at the time of Fajr on the 17th of Ramadan. The year 40 to do. Abdul Rahman ibn Mujib, he went to Kufa. And he never confided with anybody with intentions. He bought a sword 
the narration states for 1,000 dirhams. And when the day drew closer, he told a few of his close associates what he was going to do. And some of them joined him. Now the Sahari time came, and Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, he's speaking with his son, Hassan radiallahu anh, the grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, last night I saw a dream. And I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes his beloved servants, he shows them dreams. Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anh also saw a dream of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before he was martyred. Now it's time for Sahari. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, he has his Sahari. And the Mu'addi, he calls him for salah. And Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh leaves his home, calling on the way. He was his normal habit was that on the way to the masjid, he would call out as salah, as salah. To wake people up. As he reaches the masjid, and he steps inside the masjid, not Abdul Rahman al Mujim, but one of the men who was accompanying him, he struck, but he missed Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh with his sword. And his sword struck the wall instead. Immediately after him, Abdul Rahman ibn Mujim, he struck Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, and it is stated it hit his forehead. And the wound penetrated his brain. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, you can imagine how strong of a man he was. He was taken, and the other men besides Abdul Rahman ibn Mujim, they fled the masjid. Abdul Rahman ibn Mujim, he attempted to hide inside the masjid, but he was caught. And he was brought before Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anh. Sayyiduna Ali radiallahu anh said that if I die in this illness of mine, then Abdul Rahman ibn Mujim, he is to be killed. But he made a wasiyya. He said to his son that do not perform mutla. Musla is chopping the nose and the ears and taking out the eyes, meaning disfiguring the face. Do not perform this. Just kill him with the strike of a sword and that is it. And if I do not die, then I will decide what is the best punishment for Abdul Rahman ibn Mujim. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh was martyred. Over in Dimish, Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anh was leading Salat al-Fajr. And Barak ibn Abdullah, he struck. But he got Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anh yeah. on his lower back. It is stated that a few days of treatment was enough for Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anh and he was better. Authentic narration state that Barak ibn Abdullah, he was killed there after, immediately after. But this strike of Barak ibn Abdullah's sword, it got to the sciatic nerve of Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu <laughs> anhu. And as a result, he wasn't able to have children thereafter. He had children before this, but as a result, he was hurt so badly that he wasn't able to have children. Over in Mr. Amr al As radiallahu anhu, that day he was ill and he, went, and he sent one of his army officers to lead Salat al Fatih. And Umair, who was appointed the duty of martyring Sayyidina Amr al As radiallahu anhu, he entered the masjid and he struck this man, this army officer, killing him, martyring him, thinking that it was Amr ibn As radiallahu anh. Over in Dimesh, Sayyidina Muawiyah radiallahu anh, after this incident, it is stated that in his masjid he had a special place built where he would stand with security around him. So this was the martyrdom of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh. And this also took place on the 17th of Ramadan. And Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh was a great loss to the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh was the flag bearer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in all the battles. He was the flag bearer, there were three flags in the battle of Badr. One was with Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh, the other was with Mus'ab bin Umair radiallahu anh, and the third was with an Ansari Sahabi. He was the one 
who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam received nubuwa on Monday and he accepted Islam on Tuesday at the age of just 10, the first child to embrace Islam and one of the first to offer salah alongside Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that is why he has been reported to have said that I worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for five years when no man was worshipping Allah subhanallah at the age of 10 he embraced Islam he performed the ghusl after the death of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he has lowered the blessed body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into the grave alongside the two sons of Sayyidina Abbas Fawl ibn Abbas and Qutum this is Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu he was not all the sahabi my dear brothers at the time of the battle of the book when the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he left behind Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu to take care of the family members of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the army had just left outside of Medina Munawwara. And the hypocrites, they began this rumor and they began ridiculing Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu that he has been left behind with the women and children. Now Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu was a brave heart. He could not take it. So he ran to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, this is what is being said about me. Please let me go with you. The messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what did he say? Ama tarda an takuna minni bi manzilati Harun al Musa. Subhanallah. Do they not please you that your position with me is like the position of Sayyidina Harun with Sayyidina Musa ala Nabihina wa alayhi wa salatu wa salam? Subhanallah. Now the Shias, they take this to mean that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu wa should have been the first Khalifa. And I have to mention this. Why? Is because much hate is being spread regarding Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq and the Ahl Sunnah Awam and the public have to be taught. If on the river of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are not going to teach you, then who is going to teach you or where will it be taught? A hadith states recorded by Mullah Ali Qali Rahmatullah in the Khatul Mufatih, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, and I heard your noble Imam Sahib and the other Ayyama, the other scholars of this area. To mention the virtues of the Sahaba Ikram and to guide people in regards to the fitna of Shi'iya. The Prophet has been reported to have said, If you have said the word of the Prophet, you will be able to say the word of the Prophet, and you will be able to say the word of the Prophet, and the Prophet will be able to say the word of the Prophet, and the Prophet will be able to say the word of the Prophet, or the Prophet will be able to say. When widespread corruption prevails and my Sahada begin being sworn at, ridiculed, mocked, slandered, and what should an alim do? He should make his knowledge apparent. Which whosoever does not, an alim who does not make his knowledge apparent, then what is the adab and his punishment? Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, alayhi la'natullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has cursed this man. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has cursed this man. The malaika, the angels have cursed this man. And the entirety of mankind has cursed this man. For what? For not making his knowledge apparent. This is the high esteem of the Sahaba al-Kiram. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has prophesied that the Sahaba will be slandered. And the job of the ulama is to defend them at all costs. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says, وَلَا يَقْبَلُ اللَّهُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَمْتِ صَرْفًا وَلَا عَدْلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not accept any optional worship and any obligatory worship on the day of judgment. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, that does he not please you that I am leaving you behind in Medina Munawwara and your position with me is like the position of Sayyidina Harun ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wa salam with Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam meaning he was left behind when Musa alayhi salam went to collect the revelation I mentioned the Shias they say that from this we learn that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu he should have been the first Khalid there are many answers the main answers are how can this be approved when Sayyidina Harun ala Nabiina wa alayhi salatu wa salam passed away before Musa alayhi salam? 
حوض سيدنا هارون على ربنا وعليه الصلاة والسلام الخليفة and the successor of Musa عليه السلام when he passed away before him the successor of Musa عليه السلام was Yusha bin Nun عليه السلام his servant when he went to meet سيدنا قضيع and his servant at that time Allah سبحانه وتعالى refers to him as what is called Musa the Fatah his servant Yusha bin Nun alayhi salam. Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him prophethood and he was the successor of Musa alayhi salam. This is the first answer we give to those people that Sayyidina Harun alayhi salam, he passed away before Musa alayhi salam. And another answer we give is that this comparison, we can say that at the time of the battle of Badr, a narration states that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam consulted the Sahaba al Kiram in regards to what he should do with the captives of the Battle of Badr. And Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh, he was more inclined towards taking ransom from them and then fleeing them. And Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, he was more inclined towards slaying them, killing them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam addressed Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh and said, O oh, Abu Bakr, your nature is like the nature of Isa alayhi salam and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam, what did he say? In Tu'adzibhum fa'innahum ibadu Ya Allah, if you punish these people, then they are your people, you have the right to do so. Wa in taghfir lahum fa'innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim. And if you choose to forgive them, then you are the all-powerful. And you are the all-wise. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, فَمَنْ تَبِعَنِي فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمَنْ عَصَانِي فَإِنَّكَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Whosoever follows me, he is on the same religion and creed as me. وَمَنْ عَصَانِي and who does disobey me, فَإِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ That you are the all forgiving. If you choose to forgive them, you may forgive them. And then he said to Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said to Sayyidina Umar bin Khattab رضي الله عنه, O Umar, your nature is like the nature of Sayyidina Nuh. And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, who cursed their nation, who made bad dua and prayed against them, supplicate against them. Sayyidina Nuh, what did he say? Rabbi la tazar ala al-ardi min al-kafirin adayyara. O Allah, why did he go far off the face of this earth? And Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, Rabbi rakmis ala amwalihim, washtud ala qulubihim. O Allah, destroy their wealth. And O Allah, washtud ala qulubihim, seal their hearts. So this comparison with the prophets and saying someone is like somebody else does not mean that Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh is going to be the Khalifa and the successor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are just a few fadail of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anh. In another hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah amarani bi khubbi arba'in. وأخبرني أنه يحبهم. الله سبحانه وتعالى he commanded me to love for men and he also informed me that he also loves them. قيل يا رسول الله سميهم لنا. it was said oh messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم please name them to us. who are these four men? and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم replied علي منهم علي منهم علي منهم علي is from amongst them he said this three times. وأبو ذر والمقداد والسلمان أن أبو ذر المقداد السلمان رضي الله عنه. هذا بسحابة كرام رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. أنذا حديث recorded by Imam Muslim رحمة الله عليه في الصحيح. سيدنا علي رضي الله عنه. He said, والذي خلق الحب وباء النسم. That by Allah who split the grain and I swear by Allah who created the soul. إنه لعهد النبي الأمي إلي that the unlettered prophet has told me أنه لا يحبني إلا مؤمن ولا يحبني إلا منافق that it is only a believer who can love me and it is only a hypocrite who can hate me this is سيدنا علي رضي الله عنه so the history of Ramadan is very vast you find the first revelation the battle of Badr. We find the martyrdom of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. And then we get the blessed, just wife, pure wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the year 58 Hijri. Sayyida Aisha al-Siddiqa radiallahu anha, also on the 17th of Ramadan, she departed from this temporary abode. Subhanallah. What a just wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يسلي قال فضل عائشة على سائر النساء فضل فريد على سائر الطعام سبحان الله that the super the virtue of Aisha over all other women is like the virtue of Farid, meat and broth over all other foods. Aisha zawjati fil jannah. Aisha is my wife in jannah. Subhanallah. La tu'duni fi Aisha. Do not harm me in regards to Aisha. Why? Fa wallahi innahu ma nazala alayya al-wahyu. Wa ana fi lihafi miri'an fi wa ana fi lihafi imra'atin min hunna ghayraha aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa salam Do not harm me in regards to Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu anha For by Allah Wahi has not come down on me Revelation has not come down on me While I'm resting in the same blanket of any of my wives besides Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu anha Wahi would come down while Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would be resting in the same blanket as Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu anha. This is the status. Subhanallah. Urwa, he says that I saw Aisha Siddiqa radiyallahu anha. Just imagine her piety. I saw her distributing 70,000 dirham while she herself was wearing touch clothes. Imam Zuhri Rahmatullah says that if all the women of Islam and the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam besides Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, if their knowledge were to be compared with the knowledge of Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, her knowledge would outweigh their knowledge. Masruq says, رَأَيْتُ مَشِيْخَةَ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَسْأَلُونَ مَا عَلَيْ قَرَائِبِ I saw the senior companions of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم Great men around the Prophet who stayed around him at all times who fought with him, who ate with him, who stood with him, who sat with him, who prayed behind him But I saw them coming and consulting Aisha Siddiqa رضي الله عنها in regards to the Masail and the rulings and the laws of Islamic inheritance this is Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha. There was no other wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who actually saw Jibreel alayhi salam. She herself said that I saw Jibreel alayhi salam while no other wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw him. She is that wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon whose love the blessed head of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rested at the time of when his soul departed from his body. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he currently rests inside the apartment and the room of Sayyidah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what a wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam she is. And what a room that is subhanallah. I often say that there is a slight difference of opinion amongst the ulama in regards to Makkah, Mukarramah and Madinah Munawwara. According to Imam Malik rahmatullah alayhi, Madinah Munawwara is more virtuous than Makkah, Mukarramah. And according to Imam Abu Khalifa rahmatullah alayhi, Imam Shafi'i rahmatullah alayhi, and Imam Ahmed bin Hamdan rahmatullah alayhi, Makkah, Mukarramah is more virtuous than Madinah Munawwara. But remember this difference of opinion is excluding the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because regarding that they are all unanimous and they all agree on one point if you put the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one part of the scale and you put the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Kaaba on the other part of the scale the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would outweigh them in virtue for the Mualana Yusuf bin Nuri rahmatullah alayhi he writes in Ma'arif al-Sunan a beautiful point he composed لَقَدْ فَاقَ عَرْشًا وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ الْعُلَىٰ أَرْضُ الْأَرْضُ الْحَوَتْ جَسَدَ النَّبِيِّ مُخْتَارَةً سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ That the throne of land which surrounds and which carries the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has surpassed the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in virtue. And where is the body of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam resting? In the room of Sayyidah Aisha Siddiqa رضي الله عنه. I often say that those who slander Abu Bakr Siddiq رضي الله عنه do not have a right to offer salah in Masjid al-Abu Sharif. Why? Because when Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anhu, when he embraced Islam, he had 40,000 dirhams. 35,000 dirhams was spent in Makkah Mukarram of freeing slaves for the cause of Islam. He freed Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu and many other slaves. He would buy them and free them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the remaining 5,000 dirhams he used during Hijrah and he used 
to buy the cloth of land of Masjid Nabi Sharif according to some narrations he bought it for 10 dinars and then he used the remaining for the construction of Masjid Nabi Sharif so everybody who offers salah in Masjid Nabi Sharif who is gaining the Sadaqa Jariya Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq so those who slander him have no right to offer salah in there these were just a few words, time is very short I'd like to give some time now for the Mawlana was traveled from very far. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to exert ourselves in worship. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to build a close bond and a link with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enable us to make Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pleased with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from his anger, the anger of his Rasul and the anger of his pious, pious servants. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alayhi Thank <laughs> you.